today. We should have a pretty good show today. Should have quite a few people joining us. Things are happening. Things are growing. We're very, very happy. Very, very happy. I want to thank everybody for being a part of this. You know, we couldn't do this without all of you. And uh, we do appreciate every single person. We appreciate all the views, all the comments. We appreciate your likes a lot. I need as many likes as I can possibly get. Like I was saying last week, I had no idea how important the likes are. I used to see people asking, oh, make sure you smash the like button. I'm like, what, why? Well, that way it allows the algorithm to let everyone see the cool content we put out all the time. We're only getting about a million views every two days. So if we all smash that like button, a lot more people will get to enjoy these videos. So try to smash the like button on all our videos. We put out three brand new videos every single day. We put out a couple of pictures every day across all social media platforms. Those of you that are listening to us on Spotify and Apple and Megaphone, thank you very, very much for the loyal following, it's growing every single day. I cannot believe it, but I will keep doing what I'm doing as long as you all keep listening and watching. Gang, today we're talking fishing fundamentals. It's super important this time of year. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit deeper here in a minute. Remember, we got two days left. You got to go visit the store if you want to win that win that trip on the uh, bowline sport fishing with Justin Botrell. We're going out Bluefin tuna fishing with Justin. So if you want to win that trip, make sure you visit our store. All you got to do to enter that is visit the store, your saltwater guide, the store. And then maybe those of you that are coming to the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show, we've, I would say, best case scenario, you have about a week left to order your shirts, to have them get to you in time to be wearing them when you come to the show. If you're planning on coming to the show, the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show, the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of March. You definitely, if you're going to the show, why not get one of these shirts? Because I'm going to have a ton of free stuff. I'm going to have free stuff from Akuma, from Promar, from Baja Jerky, and from Costa Sunglasses. So we're going to have plenty of free stuff. And we're only going to be giving it away to the people that show up wearing one of these bitchin' ass Your Saltwater Guide t-shirts our sweatshirts, our hoodies, or whatever whatever you decide to purchase at the store. If you show up wearing one of these shirts, you swing by the booth, I'll have free stuff for you. My booth will be rocking. There'll be plenty of people there. We'll have uh, four staff members, both of my sons and their wives. Kelly girl will be in the booth. My good buddy, Elliot, will be in the booth. We'll, we'll be in the booth. It'll be rocking. We'll have plenty of people in there. I know there'll be a lot of people. A lot of people are coming to the show to see all the great seminars from all the great presenters. So make sure you're at the show. And one thing I can promise you all from the 12 years I've done this show is parking. There's plenty. Hey, Jimmy, there's plenty. Mike, Lou, thank you for joining us. John, thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, gang, it's Augie, my man. Listen, it's super important. If you're going to the show, there's plenty of parking, but you're going to be parking a mile away from where the show is. If you've ever been to the Orange County Fairgrounds gang, there is going to be plenty of parking, but you're going to be parking way far away. So make sure you get there early. You want to get there early. You want to get your tickets online sooner than later. You can get them at the show. Don't get me wrong. You can get them at the show. But if you can think about this, let's just pretend like all the people that are going to be at the show presenting, speaking, and they all have big followings. Let's just pretend like they have big followings. Well, we know they do, but let's, let's just say there's going to be so many people there. There's going to be so many. Hey, Frank. Hey, Phil. So many people there that it is going to be mind boggling. What day is slow? They were asking me on the show on Friday, no day is going to be slow. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be crowded, packed. So you want to get there early. You want to get there early for that parking lot gang. There'll be plenty of parking, but you will be parking a mile away. Get your tickets online before the show, gang. I'm just trying to help you. Sportfishingfestival.com is where you get your tickets. 
because when you get there, you're going to be blown away. Last year with two and a half halls, the line was every day was so gnarly. The line was super long. Well, this year there's seven halls, seven buildings. We have all seven buildings plus all the garden areas. 217,000 square feet of exhibits at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. Gang, that is a phenomenal amount of exhibitors. And all those exhibitors are going to have all of their followers are going to be there. And all the speakers, when you're going to have some of the best speakers, some of the best presenters, some of the best of the best fishermen in Southern California and beyond are going to be there doing their seminars. So gang, it's going to be imperative that you get there early, that you get your tickets early. You're going to go. So don't blow it and don't get pissed when you get there and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The, the, to go to the show, the tickets go to Pacific, or excuse me, sportfishingfestival.com. Sportfishingfestival.com. That's how you're going to find out everything about the show and all the cool things. They have not put the speakers, uh, they haven't put the schedule out yet of the speakers. I promise you, I know I'm speaking every single day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm speaking every day. I can promise you that. So I know I'm speaking every day. So you, whatever day you're coming, I'm going to be speaking. But you want to get there early and you want to get in because you're going to, there's going to be so much to see at this show. It's going to be overwhelming. And the really cool thing about it is all of the booths are. Go, Scott Walker, go to my website, yoursaltwaterguide.com. You'll see best not to braid the floral carbon that I like to tie, but a lot of people like to tie a lot of different knots. I can only show you the kind of knot I like to tie. But gang, I'm just trying to help you. When you come to the Orange County Fairgrounds, the parking lot is massive. They're not going to run out of parking, but you're going to be parking a long, long ways from the show. All right? Go to my website. Get one of these shirts. Go to the your saltwater guide the store. You show up with a shirt. I promise you, I'm going to have plenty of stuff for everybody. We've we're going to have at least a hundred people right now wearing these shirts, getting free stuff. You don't want to be left out. You show up to the show, you don't got one of these shirts on, and you're going to see all these people walking around with all this free stuff, and you're going to be bummed. But all right. So look, enough of that marketing, enough of that crap. Let's go. Let's talk about fishing fundamentals and. Why did I think that's a good subject for the, right now? Well, because this is what we did growing up in the sport fishing industry. This time of year, the boats didn't run much. We were all working on the sport boats up and down the Southern California coast. This time of year, it would rain and be stormy the whole time. And what would the deckhands, the captains, the guys that have been doing it for a long, long time, they didn't get involved in this. But those of us deckhands, Cubby, Paul, Billy Miyagawa and Todd Manzer, Dave Hansen, all us young kids when we were growing up on these boats. This was the time of year where we would stand on the bow of the boat because it's too windy, too rough to go out. And we would cast and we would cast and we would cast and we'd pick out backlashes and then we'd cast and then we'd pick out a backlash and then we'd cast. And we practiced casting because the guys that we looked up to, the captains of the sport boats, the Danny Wades, those guys, they were epic casters. They could cast that iron. They could cast that anchovy. They could cast that that lure, the plastic, whatever they were fishing with, the sardine, the mackerel, whatever. They could cast it so far, and we could not understand. We could not understand how they could do that because us as kids, we just didn't get it. So what would we do this time of year? We would stand on the bow, three or four deckhands, and we would cast and we would get backlashes and we joke and laugh and have a good time and then pick the backlash out, wind it in, then have another casting contest. So you could cast the farthest day in and day out and day in and day out. And when I met Kelly girl and she thought she could knew how to fish, you know what we would do? We would go and we would go to the one of the riverbeds and we'd stand on the wall and she would cast and she would practice and she would cast and she would practice and because she didn't want to get on the boat and not know how to cast. Gang, one of the most important things, if you want to be that person that catches every time, and I know a lot of you were like, 
wow, this Dorado fishing, that's great. You just pull off five feet of line, drop your bait in the water, and you catch a Dorado. Well, it's not always like that, gang. And most of the time fishing in Southern California, you have to present a good cast. You have to be able to cast your lure or your, or your bait or your mackerel or your sardine or, or your plastic lure or whatever you're going to fish with. You've got to be able to cast it to present it to the fish proper. This time of year, and if you believe in a higher power, I believe the higher power makes it like it, the weather like it is right now so that we all learn and we all go back to the basics. And we all go back and we start to understand how important it is to cast. Now, I've been blessed with the ability to fish my whole life since I was a little boy. I remember the first time, if you watch the Michael Folks interview, Inside Sport Fishing, when he interviewed me a couple of years ago, and I talked about when my, I got to go fishing the very first time with my dad on the Sun Fun when I was three years old off the end of the San Clemente Pier. That's when the bug got me and that's when the passion got me. And on a normal trip, I'll probably cast 40 or 50 baits in an hour on a normal trip with clients, with passengers, with members, because they don't know how to cast. And I want to make sure everybody gets to catch a fish. And I make all those casts day in and day out, day in and day out. You figure 40 or 50 casts an hour times that by 10 hour a day. I'm making a bazillion casts all day. I don't need to practice my casting, but you know how I got to be good at that is because I spent hours of standing in the backyard, getting giant backlashes and crying. And my dad used to say, we didn't have braided line back then. We had Dacron. We had Dacron line or you had really, really gnarly monofilament line that came off of the spools back then. Brand new off the spool, it looked like a spring. But we learned how to cast that. That's what we learned how to cast in the 70s. That's what we stood in the backyard. Well, it probably started at 69, 69, 70. Yeah. And then as it went along, 72, 73, I was starting to get really good at casting. I was 12, 11. And uh, this is what is so important, gang. This is the thing you're missing out on. Yeah, wah, it's, it's raining, it's windy, wah, wah. that means it's time to practice. Go down on your boat and stand on the back of your boat or on the bow, whichever way faces the water and cast and cast and cast and cast and look for something floating in the water and try to cast to that object, to that piece of plastic that's floating in the water or to that piece of kelp or to that piece of wood. Practice casting, casting, casting till you got it. And I don't care if it's a spinning rod or if it's a conventional reel that we all learned on in Southern California. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but you know what? It's about bait placement. It's about placing that lure. It's about making sure, I just heard my monkey running around over here. It's just about making sure that when it's time, when in the heat of the action, you can cast that bait or that lure or whatever it is to where that boil was or to where the edge of the kelp is. These are the fundamentals that are so important. And if you practice these now, we still got a couple of months because rockfish season doesn't open now until April 1st. And why is rockfish season open April 1st? I have no idea. But the best thing about it in the past was when rockfish season opened, that's when all the sport boats spread out across the ocean to go catch rockfish. And that's when they located that blue fin. This year, it's going to be a, a month later because it's hard to go out there 40, 50, 60 miles without being able to catch anything. It just, it's real hard. So you're not going to have the coverage. So what's the best yeah, and then look, Cubby summed it up perfect. Another thing that's super important is learning how to get the backlash out on your own so you don't have to get a crew member or someone to help you get it out. But this all comes with learning how to cast. Practice casting. And then when you practice casting, then you got to get the backlash out. You're going to learn which little piece of that, of that little loop or what part of that line. Believe me. Every backlash can be getting it, gotten out. You do not have to cut it. The reason people cut it is because they don't have any patience. They don't have any time. But every backlash can come out. You cannot backlash a reel to a point where it, you can't get the backlash out. Now, I understand 
if you grab that line and pull it as hard as you can because you're pissed, now you've locked it all down on itself. And yeah, you're probably not going to get it out. But if you go after it gently and calmly, you can get those backlashes out. And this is all part of the fundamentals of fishing. And it's what I was talking to one of my members this morning. You can go on my website and you can get all the spots and you can get learn tells you exactly how to fish all the spots. And you can go on and you can get the game plans on Thursday, which is going to tell you exactly where to be. So you got the spots and you know where to go. But if you don't know what to do when you get there, if you do not have the fundamentals, if you haven't sat down and learned the fundamentals, if you don't know how to tie on your hook and trust the knot that you tied, if you can't tie your hook on, that's a huge blunder. That is a huge thing. You need to take a few minutes and look at my knot videos or go to someone else's website, look at their knot videos. Mine only work every single day for a million people a day. But don't look at mine. Go look at someone else's if you don't want to watch mine. But you want to learn how to tie your hook on. You want to learn what size line I should be using, when it's appropriate to use heavier line, lighter line, bigger hook, smaller hook. All these things are the fundamentals that matter more than anything. If you go on my game plans on Thursday and I tell you, okay, look at you want to go to the half spot at La Jolla and Dan and Kim were up there the other day and they were catching calico bass and sand bass every time they threw their line in the water and they anchored on the spot and they did all that. If you don't know how to anchor because you didn't take the time, this is another fundamental that's super important. Well, I don't like to anchor. Well, that's why you suck. And that's why you never catch anything. You got to anchor the ocean's a giant desert with little oasis in it, if you would, if you believe me. They're just not fish swimming nilly-willy all over the place. So you got to learn how to anchor on the spots. And this is how I taught for many, many years with my guide. When I was going out with you on your boats, teaching you how to fish on your boat, my guide service, we would go and play in the harbor to learn how to anchor. And when I would see the five-mile-an-hour buoy or I'd see the, one of the channel marker buoys and we'd position the boat so that you would drop the anchor. I want you to figure out the current, the wind and the tidal movement so that when your anchor gets tight, that marker buoy is dead center in the middle of your stern, just in casting distance. I don't want you to be on top of it. I don't want it bouncing off your swim step. And I don't want it to be so far behind you that you can't cast to it. This is another fundamental that's super easy to get if you do it in the harbor where it's manageable and you're not letting out five miles of rope and chain and you're not hanging it on the bottom and losing it forever while you try to figure out how to anchor. That's a huge fundamental that you need to learn. This is the time of year. This is the time of year. You want to make sure that you can learn how to cast. Don't do anything until you learn how to stop. I know another thing I want to stop spending money. Stop spending money. Thank you, Dan. Yep, I'll always answer your calls. If you're a member of my website, the minute you become a member, I enter your phone number into my phone. I know who the members are and who they aren't. I always answer all my members. I always make sure that I put you exactly where you need to be so that you have the best opportunity to catch fish. What I see so much, though, is people don't watch all the videos, all 250 plus videos on how to fish in Southern California. Casting is a huge one. Anchoring the boat is another huge one. Getting your backlash out. Making sure you have the right size hooks, the right size line, the right kind of pole. All those things are fundamentally things that you have to learn. Because when the fishing starts, and it's going to start sooner than later, and you don't have these fundamentals down, you're going to kick yourself in the butt. Because... What a lot of people saw the last couple of years with the Dorado and the yellowtail and the yellowfin tuna under the kelp patties, that's easy. Anybody can do what we just did the last couple of years. Anybody can go out and find a piece of seaweed and drop your line in the water and catch a fish. That's simple. That's not hard. There's, not, there's nothing to that. That is not, not hard at all. Like I used to tell all my members, do not take me with you when we're going to go offshore looking for kelp patties. 
you're not going to learn anything. You just won't learn anything. Because when you go offshore looking for kelp patties, it's all about spending the day looking. And we talk about that all day, but that's not going to teach you anything. What's going to teach you something is going to La Jolla and dropping your anchor on the half spot or going to uh, Point Loma and dropping your anchor on the five tanks or green tanks or the pipe. Learning how to set up on all these spots and then learning how to cast to the edge of the kelp or to the edge of the of uh, the boiler rock or whatever you're trying to attempt to fish. These are the fundamentals that are so important that I can't stress it enough. And I can't even tell you how many thousands of times I've seen people show up on my boat with a tackle box that you can't even get on the boat without a forklift. It takes two guys to lift the tackle box onto the boat, which is ludicrous. I've been fishing my whole life. If I can't fit the tackle in my pocket, I usually don't bring it. Or maybe I'll put a little bit of extra stuff in my backpack. I don't think I've, I don't think I've had a tackle box since I was a little kid. But listen, what I'm talking about that tackle box is you have lures in there. You have so many lures and irons and plastics. And, and I ask you, do you know how to cast? And you say, oh, yes, I know how to cast. And then you, get, you can't cast. You can't cast five feet. And you might be able to cast 10 feet, but with zero accuracy, one minute it's hitting the back of the boat, the next minute it's hitting the front of the boat, and the fish are straight out in front of you on the edge of the kelp. Stop spending money on stuff that you'll never use. You, you, if you do not know how to cast accurately for long distances, you don't need any lures. You do not. I'm sorry. I know you own a tackle store, and, and I'm just trying to be honest. Stop spending money on stuff that won't help you. As you learn how to fish, you need a bag of hooks, some sliding sinkers, some fishing line and a fishing pole. And as you get to get better and you're better at casting your lures, I mean, casting your bait, then you can go buy a handful of lures. Now you've started to learn how to fish, but I see people buy so much garbage, so much garbage, and they have no idea how to use it. And I'm, ta I'm, not, I'm not making it up about these tackle boxes, gang. I ran sport boats for years where the people bring these tackle boxes that you can't even lift. And it's absolutely ridiculous and hilarious. They have so many lures, so much garbage because they went to a tackle store and they talked to the kid that's making a minimum wage that works in the tackle store that's been out on the boat once in his whole life. And he's give, you're taking advice from him on what you should buy. Oh my gosh. I'm not taking anything away from the tackle stores. Tackle stores are great. Most tackle stores are phenomenal. There are a handful, though, that they're just dripping attitude when you walk in the door. They're dripping attitude when I walk in the door. I just don't understand that. You work in a flipping tackle store. If you cannot bring your flipping ego down far enough to talk to these people, then get out of the business and go do something else. You don't know poop. If you knew stuff, you wouldn't be working in the tackle stop. You'd be running a yacht or you'd be running something. You need to lose your attitude. There are really good tackle stores with really good people. And you can tell right away they don't have an attitude. They're not dripping an attitude. They're not. But those attitude guys, that blows my mind. Stop wasting your money. Stop wasting your money. And those of you that work in the tackle stores that your feelings are getting hurt right now, you're the ones with the attitude. Because if you didn't have the attitude, your little feelings would not be getting hurt right now. So, wah. I don't have time for your crybaby stuff. I'm blown away when I walk in and you got a dripping attitude. I just can't believe it. Hey, I need some help over here. You don't want to work at the tackle? Don't work there. Go do something else. We're coming in. We need some help. And when I send my clients in there, they need some help. Be nice. Calm down. We can buy tackle online. We can buy it anywhere we want. Lose your attitude. It's baloney. It's the biggest bunch of crap I've ever seen in my life. And if you got employees that work for you that have attitude, it's costing you a lot of money. It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. All right. So back to what we were talking about. <laughs> fundamentals. Dang, the fundamentals are so important. It's the most important thing. Stop wasting your money. Start spending money on garbage. And get out and start to learn how to do the things that 
you know how to do. Learn how to do the things that you know how to do perfect. If you know how to tie your hook, make sure you know how to tie your hook in a, less than a minute. You can tie your hooks on in 30, 30 seconds or less. Great. Master your hook tying. Master, master your connection knot between your braided line and your floral carbon or your monofilament and your floral. Master the connection knot. It's important, gang. It's going to change what you catch. And then I can't emphasize it enough like we talked about for the first 15 minutes of the show. Learn how to cast. Learn how to cast. Learn how to cast accurately over and over again. I can't even tell you how many times I went with people on their boats and I went with lots of them on their boats. And what I would hear, oh yeah, we, we know how to fish. I get on the boat, they can't cast. Can't cast. If you can't cast, you do not know how to fish. You don't. Yet, yeah, I know your sister's brother's aunt's cousin took you fishing and you caught a fish once. But if you don't know how to cast, you have no clue how to fish. You just don't. And another thing, stop telling us how good you are. Believe me, when the boat stops and you put your line in the water, it will all be revealed. And it's revealed instantaneously because of the way you know how to cast. If you don't know how to cast, you don't know how to fish, period, end of story. I don't need to argue with you. I don't want to know another thing. I don't want to know what you know, okay? Let me just help you. I own a website that teaches people how to catch fish. The people that follow my simple game plan and follow my simple advice and do exactly what I say, they do phenomenal when they go fishing. They do. They do absolutely phenomenal when they go fishing. Blows my mind is when you want to call me up and argue with me and tell me what you think you think you know. I don't, okay, if you know so much, why are you even calling me? <laughs> it just blows my mind. It blows my ever-loving mind. I'm sorry, I'm just being honest. You don't have a clue how many phone calls I get every day because of my 3,700 plus members. And 99.9% .9 of them understand and they get it. But there's that one-tenth of 1% 1 that just, I don't know. They just want to tell me what they know, which just blows my mind. I don't want to know what you know. I'm already set in my ways. And I know some really good people that have been fishing longer than I have that are more than willing to share their information. And I want to learn what they know. But I don't want to know what you know. I'm sorry. I, it kind of sounds like kind of kind of um, smart assish, but it, that's me. And I'm sorry, I apologize for uh, saying a bad word, but it was a weird week and I had a lot of different calls from a lot of different people. But the number one thing I tried to explain to everybody is fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. It's so important. And that's what those 250 plus how-to videos on the website are all about. You'll be shocked at how many people have spent a lot, a lot of money on my website over the years and have never watched a video. <laughs> I don't know. My ex-wife bought one of those stair steppers once and put it underneath the bed and never pulled it out from underneath the bed. And she stayed, she got bigger instead of smaller. It's just because you became a member of my website does not mean that it's gonna help you unless you watch the videos and do what I say. Under However you can cast, Martin, is the best way to cast. However you can cast. However you can cast is the best way. I can cast pretty good. I, I overhand cast my live bait, my anchovy, everything. I overhand cast everything. I overhand cast mackerel onto marlin. I overhand cast everything because that's the best the most accurate I can possibly be. Whatever way you've learned how to cast is the most accurate way to cast. That's the way you need to cast every time. But if you're not accurate with the way you cast, then you don't know how to fish. I'm sorry, you just don't. It's not even worth arguing about. You don't know how to fish if you don't know how to cast. And that's, you can talk to all the captains up and down the Southern California, California coast about that and just ask them, hey, if I don't know how to cast, what kind of a fisherman do you, you suck? 
That's all we're going to tell you is you suck. You need to learn how to cast. If you don't have time to learn how to cast, that's crazy because we all have time to learn how to cast. Believe me, I spent many hours crying like a baby, picking backlashes out to where I couldn't even see because the tears were dripping all over the reel. Because all I wanted to do was be able to cast like the captains that I worked for. I wanted to be able to cast like Pete Grosbeck. I wanted to be able to cast like Steve Lasley. I wanted to be able to cast like Don Brockman. I wanted to be able to cast. These guys could cast so well, and I didn't understand that you just don't pick up the rod and reel and cast it a mile. You have to practice. I can't talk about it enough. We could talk about it till my head falls off. It's the most important thing, and if you don't know how to cast, then you don't know how to fish. Sorry. And if you think you know how to cast, go down there and cast accurately to something. Go down there and cast to that piece of wood floating in the water or cast to that piece of kelp floating by accurately over and over again. What can One thing I can tell you, I just got to ask this question. When you're casting, when you finish your cast and your rod is pointed at the water, the tip should be pointed at the water. It's, you shouldn't stop your cast in the middle of the air and have the tip pointed up. And you should follow through with your cast and have the tip of your rod not only pointing at the water, but pointing at the spot that you want it to go to. If I wanted it to go to the left, I'm not going to finish my cast with my rod pointed to the right. It's just not how it works. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Okay. Wednesday. We're going to open up for questions again. We're going to do text the show Wednesday. On Friday, we're going to have one of the most special guests that you can even imagine is going to be on the show. And I know a lot, it's very controversial because a lot of people are super jealous of this young man, our old man now. I've known him forever. This father, husband, man, phenomenal businessman. He's taken this whole bluefin tuna thing to another level. Billy K, Billy Killerman will be joining us on Friday with our show. He'll be answering all your questions. He will be doing call in Friday or text the show Friday. Kelly girl will be here letting you know. Get ready for Billy. Billy's coming. I'm stoked. I've known Billy for a very, very long time. I used to run his charger boat for him back in the early 2000s. Everyone thinks Billy just got in the business. Billy's been in the business for a very, very long time. He's one of my very close personal friends, and he's going to do me a favor and be on the podcast with us. So get ready for that show on Friday. It's going to be good. And you can send in your questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer all of them with Billy. One thing we will not put up with is any baloney. We don't put up with any negative stuff on my show, and we sure won't put up with anything negative with Billy's here. Do not embarrass me. Do not embarrass the show. If you don't like him or you don't like me, don't watch. It's pretty simple. I mean, I was having a conversation on YouTube with a gentleman right before we went live. He says, why are you always so why are you always putting people down? I'm like, you watch my videos? Why do you watch my videos if you don't like me? I mean, I've come from the old school where if we didn't like what was on TV, we changed the channel. We never, ever wanted that to not be on. TV. I didn't even think that was, a, oh, that show shouldn't be on because I don't like it. Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Grow up. If you don't like something, don't watch it. You don't have to try to cancel everybody all the time just because you're a crybaby if you don't, just don't watch. It's pretty simple. The other million people that watch me every other day, they'll take your place. They got no problem with that. So look, go to my website, get one of these shirts. Be ready. Tomorrow we'll have another phenomenal show. We'll get way deeper into uh, why same people catch fish all the time and why you don't. We're going to go deep into that subject. It's going to be awesome. And one thing I promise you on my shows, and I do a live show every single day, Monday through Friday. I don't think anybody else does anything close to what we do. We've had over 1,100 of these shows in the last three years, three and a half years. I only talk truth. I only talk truth. If it's not, you don't like it, don't watch. It's pretty simple. It's pretty 
freaking simple. Don't like me, don't watch me, gang, but I'm going to only tell you the truth. That's all I have is truth. I don't lie. I don't make up baloney. I tell you the honest to God truth all the time. I will be here again tomorrow, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time with another great show. And don't forget, on Wednesday, it's going to be text the show Wednesday. Kelly Girl will be in the office here with me and Marley, and she is going to pull one name out of the hat to win that trip on Bowline Sport Fishing with Justin Botrell. I'm going to fly up. We're going bluefin tuna fishing when the tuna starts to bite, but we're giving that trip away. And how do you get entered into that contest? You got to visit our store, your saltwater guide, the store. All you do is visit the store. That gets you entered into the contest. And Kelly's going to pull your name out of the hat. And somebody is going to win that trip on Wednesday, February 1st. I can't even believe February 1st is Wednesday. That is just mind-boggling to me. Ugh, mind-boggling to me that we're already done with January. Before we know it, we'll be rock cod fishing and we'll be out having fun and finding those bluefin. Gang, a couple of things. Turn off the news. Every side is lying. Front, back, left, right. They all lie. It's all a lie to try to control you. They're, go out and have fun. It's not as bad as everyone says it is. I will be here for you again tomorrow. Tell, speak in truth. If you don't like it, don't watch. Bye. Pretty simple, right?